Ain't that the truth, Brother James? Pray, pray for the teachers. So glory to God, our elder already prayed over the service, amen. And um, there's, a, there's a few things that, that God wants to address quickly. Is um, everybody lift up your finger, amen. Now how many of you know that you have a fingerprint? Is my fingerprint like your fingerprint? Everybody has their own fingerprint, right? You can go ahead and put your finger down, praise God. Our worship service this morning has to do with identity and then when you see the transition from this identity it's into your beloved identity and we're talking about God's fingerprint amen the beauty is when I went over there to um, to, to give love to principal Sarah it wasn't really me giving her love she she gave me love in the overflow because we got to talk for a little bit and a couple things that I mentioned to her was, it's interesting because people are going to think that we share notes before you <laughs> preach to the kids. We never had in four years. Amen, principal? We never had. And um, she talked about having that power button, right? Well, how many of you today want to access God's power? Can I get an amen? I promise you, this is a big promise, I promise you in Jesus' name what Holy Spirit will do in you if you just allow him. Now, this is the fight that we have. God knows what you're struggling with. God knows everything. Amen? Say it with me, everything. everything. God knows everything. All he's asking from you is if you would take the time, this next 45 minutes, hour or so, whatever God has for us, to just completely let go. Completely let go. Don't worry about the bills. Don't worry about where you're going to sleep tonight if you're homeless. If, if you ain't got no food, don't worry about that. We got food pantry. Can I get an Amen. Just, just don't worry. Father God just wants you to stay focused right now on Lord Jesus Christ. Can we do that all together now? Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. The one we're going to talk about this morning is, you guys know him as Saul of Tarsus. He is the author of three-fourths of the Holy Bible New Testament. That's a lot of books. He went from Saul to say his name, Paul. And this is the beauty behind just looking at this blessed author. He's a brother of ours, amen. Listen, I know there's religions that call him a saint. Well, guess what? If you have Jesus Christ as Lord, you're a saint. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? We have to understand this before we move forward. Because remember, we're talking about our identity. Right? You see, if you have Christ as Lord... You are a new creation. And I don't want to jump ahead, but I want to bless you and encourage you. Because the way you walk into this building, you don't have to walk out the same. Can I get an amen? amen. Let me ask you again. Do you want to walk out the same? No. I want to walk out gooder and gooder. Amen. And I want everything God paid for for me. Amen. amen. And I, I declare that right now over your life, over your family, over your children. We pray for Every one of y'all, every day. I'm not saying it to boast on ourselves. It's to boast on Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I, I, I want to welcome our first-time visitors. Do we have any first-time visitors, visitors in the house? Praise God. Praise God. I see three over here. Anybody on this side? Nobody? Well, we here at Open Arms Community Church, thank God that he brought you here. And we believe with all of our hearts you don't have to go anywhere. This is home. And just to prove it, on the count of three, church family, one, two, three. Welcome home. Welcome home with all of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a girl. Look at her. New, hey, new baby scent. Go over there and smell your head. New, new, new babies just smell amazing, right? Because they're just straight from heaven. There's baby Grace right there. Look. Holy Spirit's, Holy Spirit's baby. Look at that. Praise God. So to, to go through all this. Say it with me, you're invited. invited. We're going to be in Acts 7, 57, 58. So real quick, I have um, Bible study material up here uh, for Monday evening. And I left it up here, and if you want it, um, at the altar call, you feel free to take it, okay? I'm not going to talk about the rest of the stuff yet, because Holy Spirit said don't, so I can't. So we're going to be in Acts 7, and we're going to talk about the invitation. After that, God is good. Oh, 
all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you so much. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. Amen. <laughs> yes. No, you smell it. He said, I'm proud of you, man. All the time. Hallelujah. Hello. I love you, beloved. We're going to go in Acts 22, and we're going to hear, we're going to hear the Apostle Paul testimony from his own mouth of what happened. Then we're going to close out here in Acts 9 and Acts 13. I want to pause here because I know some of you are taking notes, and praise God for that. Because let's write down. Right? Let's write down the revelation and let's allow God to flow. Amen? Now remember, writing things down is great. I know, I journal every day. I write every day. Amen? But here in my heart, beloved family, we need to speak. Can I hear an amen? This is the sword. This is the sword. You release it into the atmosphere. Amen? Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Yes. Praise God. Y'all happy? Yes. Hallelujah. Everybody except Brother Justin over here. Well, because of you, Brother Justin, if you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, then you're. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. Let's give God praise. I, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Praise God. So this is how we're going to break everything down. We're going to go into the invitation, we're going to go into introduction, and then we're going to go into the intimacy. And remember, all this ties into, say with me, identity. identity. Hallelujah. In Acts 7 says this, at this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, and they all rushed him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile... The witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. It's pretty heavy how we start right off the bat in this scripture. Um, for those of you who were here Wednesday evening or, e or either listened to the message Wednesday evening, the title of that message was You're Invited. And we covered this scripture at that time. And it was talking about this anointed man of God named Brother Stephen. Now, Brother Stephen is just like you, beloved child of God. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord, say it with me, I am anointed. I am anointed. See, when you declare that from your heart, nothing can stop God Almighty. And his Holy Spirit in you right now is flowing through you. But remember, we're talking about identity. Amen? If your identity was hurt back in the day, if the devil hurt your identity and you actually believe that hurt, if the, if, the, if the devil abused you in some way, if the devil put drugs in your system, if the devil got you addicted to whatever, that hurt your identity. Can I get an amen? And so it, it leads us to this invitation that we have in the Lord. Wow, this thing's acting up on me. It's all good. We don't even need it truly, but I just want to show you something real quick. Look at this picture. Here's a, here's, a, here's a brother that's filled with Holy Spirit, that has Jesus Christ as Lord, and here's all these haters that are basically stoning him to death. Now what we uncovered, what Holy Spirit taught us on Wednesday evening, was that this man, Stephen, didn't even curse his enemies, didn't ask God to save him from it, didn't ask God why. Come on now, am I preaching to somebody? Didn't ask God, why am I going through this? I thought, I thought you loved me. What did he do? He called out to Lord Jesus Christ, and then he also said, Lord, forgive them. Don't hold it against them. And meanwhile, meanwhile, say it with me, meanwhile, meanwhile, Saul was watching the whole thing. Now, back in that tradition, when someone would lay their coats down in front of you, it's a recognition of your authority. It's the recognition of your power. It's 
reverence, when I lay my coat down in front of you, you're the man, you're in charge, I'm just going to follow through with what the law says to do, but I, I respect you. And you can see Saul, and, and, I, and, and I love this picture, as, as, as horrible as it is, I love this picture. You know why? Because it's an invitation. Say it with me, you're invited. See, at this moment, I believe with all my heart, especially in this past few days, in my prayer room, in my worship time, Holy Spirit show me that your actions, the way you live your life, is an invitation for the whole world to know Jesus. Can I get an amen? Ain't that the truth, though? Back when I was running, running around in the world, a drunk, an addict, Listen, I'm throwing myself under the bus, running away from Jesus. I just wanted to party, put everything in me. Anything that felt good, I was doing it. Next thing I know, nothing was feeling good anymore. Just one amen. I'm only preaching to one person. I'm just going to stand over here and Brother Todd. No, I'm done talking to you all. So Brother Todd, so check this out. So I was just putting everything in me that I thought was going to make me feel good. But then I just kept getting deeper and deeper in the hole. But guess what? Even though I was doing all these things, I was preaching a message. I was showing other souls, yeah, just drink all the time. Go ahead and just smoke that. Just do them drugs. Oh, you want to be likable like me? You want to have a good time? You want to party? Just go ahead and do that. You see what I'm saying? I was inviting people, but I wasn't personally talking to them and inviting them. I was displaying the invitation based on the fruits of my life. Can you get an amen? amen? But as a beloved child of God, when you truly receive Lord Jesus Christ, when I say truly, this means that I choose this day. I'm speaking to many of you right now. I choose this day, Father God, to die in you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And I promise, Lord, that when I call on your name, when I make you my Lord and Savior, I know that every part of me dies in you, Lord. And I know that you will raise me from the grave just like you rose again on that third day in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What happened? What happens to your identity? Your identity changes. Amen? Your identity. Come on now, family. Am I the only one? When I first smoked that joint and I realized how, ooh, all of a sudden I'm not thinking about how I got abused. All of a sudden, I'm not so angry. Wow, this is great. What did I do? I did it some more. Am I preaching to somebody? Right? And I kept on doing it. Like I said, to the point where that wasn't working anymore. I need to find something stronger. I need to find something stronger. I need to find something stronger. Here I am to tell you the only strongest one is in Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Give him praise. Hallelujah. And he lives in every one of you. Hallelujah. He lives in every one of you. Say with me, I'm covered by the blood. Did you know that you can make yourself sick if you just keep thinking silly? How many of you know this? Raise your hand. So I challenge you in the next three hours. Hallelujah. We're going to preach for three hours. Hey, half, half the room got crunchy. Half the room said, huh? I'm just messing with you. Golly, calm down. Uh, but I challenge you in these next few moments, think yourself blessed. Well, Brother Joe, you just don't know what I'm going through my body. You just don't know what kind of pain I'm in. You just don't know what my relationship is like. You just don't. I don't. Stay after service. We'll talk and we'll go. I love you. But I don't know. But what I do know is how much God loves you. And what he did on the cross for you. So that you can overcome any situation. Amen. Say with me, his name is holy. Let's start acting like it. Can I get an amen? I know for a fact that when I say Jesus Christ right now, their souls being changed. Glory be to God. Their souls being changed. Why? Because Holy Spirit right now, this is his church, his presence right now. You see, my identity is not in my race. My identity is not in my bank account. My identity is not in my last name. 
My identity is not what I do for a living. My identity is in. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. So say it with me. You're invited. So now we're going to get into the introduction. I love this part. Now it happened. I love it when the Bible talks like that. Maybe it's just my sense of humor, but when the Bible starts off that way, Brother PJ, oh, it happened. Amen. Like, get ready for this because it happened. Amen. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus. This is Paul testifying now. You're hearing from Paul who stood there when Stephen was getting stoned and murdered. This is the same guy now. Back then he was, he was Saul, right? This is the same guy now testifying and sharing not only in this book but for the rest of eternity, whoever's going to read this, he's testifying this is what happened. As I journeyed and came near Damascus, about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard the voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Here's the introduction. introduction. Right now, in every heart, whether you're saved by his blood and you called on his holy name, Hallelujah, you are saved by his blood. You are eternal. But there's some of you right now, you've been running away. I don't know why, but you've been running away. I'm not one to judge you. You've just been doing your thing. But you know the time is now to stop running. You know the time is now that I need to get right with you, God, because this devil, he is playing too many games with me. And the only power to overcome this is through your resurrection power in Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's only through that resurrection power. Amen? Amen. Listen, this world's going to do everything it can, right, to steal, kill, and destroy. But God. That's a big but. Hallelujah. That's a big but. But God. Hallelujah. But God. He gave us Lord Jesus Christ so you can call upon his name. And not just use his name in vain, no, rebuke that, but to call upon his name so that you know that salvation is in his name. And that every time you speak his glorious name, that you are reminded of a perfect love of a father God. God Almighty who created the entire universe, how much God loves you. You're reminded in that name that no matter what you're facing right now, no matter what you're going through, no matter how many people are hating on you, no matter what, what family is doing, no matter how children are acting, no matter how the wife is, no matter how the husband, no matter how the career, no matter how the money, you could look upon Lord Jesus Christ and know that no matter what I go through, I cannot come close to what you have done to purchase my salvation for me. Amen? Amen. There's no question. Say it with me. There's no question. There's no question as far as how much, how much our beloved God loves you. There's no question as far as what he says about you. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean what he says about me? Jesus Christ is the word of God. So if you ever think that, oh, well, maybe because I messed up today, maybe because I keep messing up with the same thing, God don't love me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Can I get an amen? God loves you just as much as he loves me. But I'm his favorite. Almost half the church almost got up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say it with me, introduction. Now we're going to close out with intimacy. And intimacy is really simple. Those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid. Now this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be as far as just backing up the testimony of what the Apostle Paul just stated. But now you're going to see as far as what happens in the background. He saw the light, was afraid, did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said, arise and go to Damascus. And there you will be told many things to appointed for you to do. And since... I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of those who were with me. I came into Damascus. This, say, say his name, Ananias. Ananias. 
Ananias is this, just like you, say it with me, just like me, anointed from God, Jesus is his Lord, he hears from God, he's speaking to God, Holy Spirit lives in him, he's in the anointing of Holy Spirit, he's talking to the Lord, and then Father God says, you're going to go to Damascus, and you're going to pray over this man named Saul. Is this thing on? What was that, Lord? Arise. You're going to go pray over this man. And could you imagine? Because Ananias knows this man was put in charge to arrest and kill Christians. So obviously, listen, I'm going to confess to you right now. I don't know if I do it. Judge me if you want, but take it up with him and go to the altar, amen, because you shouldn't judge. Pray for me. I'm just confessing. God, you want me to go pray? Lay hands on this murderer? Which, that's like touching a great white shark. Right? You want me to go rub his nose? Are you kidding me? Do you see the teeth on those? Right? Right? You want me to go lay hands on, on this guy, Saul? I've known what he's done, right? I know. I know the people he killed. I bet you he was like name dropping. You ever do that with the Lord? Oh, it's just me. So you don't tattletale. Okay, it's just me then. Okay, you're just holier than thou. All right, I'm sorry, but I tattletale. Don't get me upset. I'll tattletale in a heartbeat. I learned from the best. Look, I'm tattletaling right now. Right? Daddy, they hurt me. They hurt me, Daddy, right? So check this out. Saul got up from the ground, opened his eyes, and he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus for three days. He was blind. Say with me, intimacy. We're going to fast forward through all that. Meanwhile, somewhere in Damascus, this is where we need to be with Ananias. This is what he says. Go straight to the house. Go, go to the house of Judas on straight street. And ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. And then this is the part that we're talking about right here. Lord. <laughs> Lord. Lord. Right. Don't you love moments like this? <laughs> I mean, we're, our Father God knows everything. And in his mercy and grace, it's beyond his love for us. Praise God we have Jesus because we could wrap his love in this beautiful package. And his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And the beauty about this beautiful package of Lord Jesus Christ, the beauty about him is that when you open that package, and that's what he did. He opened himself for us through the crucifixion. And in that resurrection power, we have this gift, this gift of his Holy Spirit that he lives in us. And now I, say with me, I breathe different. You know why I believe and declare if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you, you breathe what Holy Spirit is breathing into you. Amen? Well, pastor, don't everybody breathe? Okay, crunchy, yes. All right? Thank you for the news flash. Okay? But hear my heart. Hear my heart, family. We all breathe, but does everybody know Jesus? How about the ones that know Jesus? Do they receive Holy Spirit? Amen. Now, does everybody bless Holy Spirit? And Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Amen. So God wants us to do this real quick on the count of three. Take the biggest breath you can in your nose. And then when you exhale, not yet. Y'all trying to steal my blessings. And this is your first time here. I love you, man. Hey, you two stand up real quick. Keep them in prayer. They're engaged. Hallelujah. We love y'all. Praise God. We love y'all. But what we're going to do, what we're going to do is take a deep breath in our nose. And we'll, I, I believe and declare in Jesus Christ, he's holy. In Jesus Christ's holy name, that his breath, Holy Spirit breath, is going to flow through his temple. Do this with me. Like we're playing Duck, Duck, Goose. You ever play Duck, Duck, Goose by yourself? I've done that before when I was little. Man, I was so good at it, too. Duck, 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 goose, oh! oh I mean. 
Couldn't even move. Got it again. Mm. All right. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. So this is what beloved Ananias had to say. We know the story. I'm going to go quick. I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And as he come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer in my name. Amen. Say it with me, intimacy. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul, on that great white shark. Right? Hey, I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to preach real and be obedient to how Holy Spirit wants us to teach and learn from him. Amen? It's easy to preach a message and just keep going. But Holy Spirit teaches. Amen? He's the only teacher. Hear my heart. What if Ananias said, I don't want to do it? Preach! What would happen to the word of God? Have you ever thought of that? So please, in the name of Jesus, get out of religion. Get out of, oh, I know this scripture. It was taught to me in vacation Bible school. Listen, that was 38 years ago. Just give it a break, all right? Let's learn something new, amen? My point, listen, my point that I'm making in Holy Spirit is that God is asking us always, say it with me, always, always. to get uncomfortable with him. See, we are all children of God with his anointing, which I know for a fact God tells you, I need you to get up and go pray for that person. Lord, act like you can't hear all of a sudden, huh? Huh? Act like you can't hear all of a sudden, right? Right, my beloved brother? I mean, it's one of those things when God calls on you to go do something, it's up to us in our relationship with the Holy Spirit to say, all right, I got to go. You know how many times I hear from beloved brothers and sisters, oh, and it breaks my heart. Oh, well, pastor, I knew God was telling me to go pray for this, this person at Walmart, but I just didn't. But I said a prayer. I have to tell him, you were disobedient. <laughs> well, I'm just not going to tell you nothing no more. Well, that's between you and the Lord, but he told you something to do. And you didn't follow through. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Praise God. Sent me, <laughs> has sent me so that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Say it with me, intimacy. I love that picture, don't you? Praise God. We're doing good on time, amen? Listen, I need your help. I need your help. Because some of y'all start looking a little upset or crunchy. The taco place is still going to be there. Last time I checked, they're not going to run out of chips. Okay? But I'm asking you, help me. Help me help you. Amen? I, I, I know that we're going to run a little bit over. Is that going to be okay with y'all? Yeah. Praise God. Is it going to be all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want... Uh-oh, John Boy don't look too happy. Now we're going to have to sing a song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen? So say it with me, Intimacy. So we see these things that's on the screen right now. The invitation that took place all the way back when he stood there and watched Stephen get stoned. Remember, Saul was in the position of authority. He could have, you know this, he could have said, stop. We're not doing this. Even after hearing a beloved child of God say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive him. Don't hold it against him. May I ask you something? You think Stephen died after one blow? Now we're getting real, right? We're getting real, aren't we? But how are we as children of God when we feel that one blow and all of a sudden we forget who Lord Jesus is? Now it's all about our problems, right? Now it's all about, now it's all about how you hurt me or what you said about me or how I don't feel like it's a good message or I don't feel like the church should do this or I don't feel like you, you, you can already feel the yuckiness, right, out of that. And guess what? There's people in here right now struggling with that. If that's you, I encourage you, come to the altar and repent. Because that thing right there, 
that thing, that thing right there. Forgive me, I laughed. My country accent came out. That, that thing right there, it's a seed from the devil, and all that produces is garbage in your life. Amen? Say it with me, no more. No more. But we're going to talk about identity. Immediately something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise for all the baptisms we had today. It's all him. And if you want to be baptized after service or later on, you just let us know. Praise God. We'll, we have to be obedient because Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming soon. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray it happens while we're here celebrating. Man, how much favor is that? Right, beloved of God, that here we are in his holy house, worshiping, and that trumpet goes off. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I preach so long. I'm just... <laughs> then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. It's one of the best pictures I can find. I don't know if he looked like this. All right, I don't want to hear it. I know. I'm already going to hear from a few people. I don't know if that's uh, biblically correct and how Saul. Listen, you're missing the point. Can I get an amen? You're, you're, you're getting eaten up with religion. And listen, that's what God taught. If you think that you can memorize the Bible and impress God, why do you think Lord Jesus Christ came? We did too good of a job memorizing the Bible. We did too good of a job. Believe me. And Lord Jesus Christ had to come and say, y'all got it all wrong. Our elders doing it right now. It's all right here. He's a daddy. He's perfect. And he loves you. It has nothing to do with what you memorize. It's how you live. How many of you want to live a life of victory? Can I get a hallelujah? It's going to start today. Can I get an amen? It's going to start today. So real quick, we got the invitation, and this is the fingerprint of God Almighty. Amen. Put your finger in the air. Wave it like you just don't care. Say, hey. hey. Say, ho. Oh. Oh. Say, what, what? what, what? Say, I like big butt. <laughs> but God. Get your mind out of the gutter. Oh, my goodness. We need all the leadership to lay hands on this whole section right here. Big butt is but God. Amen? Oh, man, something else. Something else. Y'all pray for us. We are family. Amen? We're eternal family. Hallelujah. So we have the fingerprint of God. Next, introduction. Here it is, the cross. Beloved child of God, I speak to every soul in here. In some of us, right now as we sit here, this is where our relationship stops in our identity with God. This is where it stops. Yes, I was introduced to Christ. Yes, I received him. Yes, I am a child of God. You're right. You are. But here in my heart, it doesn't end right there. Say it with me, intimacy. And this is the power of God. You heard Pastor Sarah mentioned the power button, right? Here it is, the power of God. Can you get an amen? When you put all those things together, when you put it all together, this is your beloved identity. And what this beloved identity looks like is our little church symbol that we got right there. Amen? Say it with me. It's God's fingerprint through Christ my Lord turning on the power, the resurrection power. In me, in, me. In, Holy Spirit. in Holy Spirit. So what we wanted to do is bless you guys with this little identity card. And there's a little keychain there. And it has all those symbols there for you, for you to be reminded of your beloved identity. Can you get an amen? And I encourage you to come up. Please, um, because by the grace of God, you can see, I thank God. Listen, it's all Holy Spirit. This is his house. And God is the one growing this church. 
Amen. It has nothing to do with, listen, it has nothing to do with the preaching or what we do. It's all Holy Spirit. And you can see what our glorious God is doing. He's bringing in his children before that trumpet sounds. Amen. And I thank God that you chose to be here this morning. Hallelujah. This is what it says in Ephesians 6, 19. Everybody stand up with me. Praise God. I ask this prayer from you for me as well when I say this prayer through the scriptures. But this is what beloved identity Paul was saying to the church of Ephesia. Listen, listen to this. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me, that I fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. For I am, say it with me, I am an ambassador in change. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. The beauty is, is that on your identity, it's a little key chain. And I just thank God that you're going to be reminded. And there's a little, uh, little card in there. Maybe you have a family member, a cousin, right? A friend, co-worker, that they're running away from the Lord or they don't want to submit. You might give them the whole thing. Or, or, or be like me, keep the keychain and give them the business card. That's between you and the Lord, amen? But every one of these have been anointed and prayed over. Seriously, it took, Lord said, I'm not even going to tell you that. Lord said, don't tell you that, but just to tell you that every one of us has been prayed over and anointed in oil. And then also this morning in our meeting with all the leadership and the elders, they prayed over it as well. And we just pray blessings upon blessings upon you and your family. And beloved family, the time is coming near. Amen. The time is coming near. So without further ado, I'm going to ask this question before this music plays. We ran a few minutes over, but it's okay. Amen. Listen, if you're upset, you go to the taco restaurant down there, and it's free chips on me. Free chips on me. All right? When, when, yeah. My beloved Trish said she got the salsa. So look at you. All of you all got a free meal today. So you, are you all upset? No, nobody's crunchy, right? Well, let's be serious for, for a moment. Um, if somebody would, can you turn down the lights for me? Thank you, Elder Lance. There's some of you that the devil's hurt your identity so much that you actually believed that that was your identity until you heard this message today from Holy Spirit. My beloved brother, my beloved sister, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm just a fallen man. I'm a sinful person. But it's this one man that saved my identity. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm grateful for all of eternity because I'm not worthy to stand here in, the, in front of God's most awesome anointed church in all this world. I say this to you, beloved child of God. That's the devil, and the devil has nothing but destruction, murder, death, and strongholds. And I pray that you hear me in these next few minutes. If that is you that you're struggling right now, in your identity, in who you are, or maybe you're struggling right now in a season where you're like, I don't know what to do. If that's you, I'm going to ask everybody to just be still. If that's you, and God right now is knocking on the door of your heart and saying, Son, I want you. You know what I did on that cross for you. You know that I love you, that I'm for you. Will you make today today? If that's you, will you raise your hand up high, loud and proud for the Lord? I see that hand. I see those hands. Glory be to God. I see those hands. The Heavenly Father says we're going to do something that's going to make you uncomfortable. But hear my heart. He's on your side. And you're surrounded by God's eternal family. And now you are a part of it because when you raised your hand, you said, Father, I'm done. I'm going to challenge you. For those of you who raised your hand, will you come up front with me? As you come up front, beloved family, yes. Let's give them a round of applause.
ask the elders to come up, deacons. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else? Praise God. I ask the leadership of the church to come because they're going to anoint you in oil. And this oil is blessed by God and it's symbolic of his blood and his Holy Spirit. And from this day on, this moment on, you are no longer your own. You belong to Lord Jesus Christ. But the glory of God is, is that he wants to hear it from your heart. He wants to hear this prayer together. Beloved church family, I'm going to ask you, for all of you out here, you may, you, you may be saved, you may not, but I'm going to ask you, will you join in prayer when we pray this prayer of salvation together? I want to bless God with an earthquake. Amen? I want to shake heaven. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. We're going to pray this all together. Amen? Amen. Let's say with me. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you guys.